Well, hey there, American Farmsteaders. This is Jenny with the Gramstead Family Farm. And Donna with Hazel Bell Farm. And we are coming to you from Northeast Florida as two American Farmsteaders doing our best to grow our own food and share our homesteading experiences with you in hopes that you will grow a little bit of food of your own. Yes. And this week we are talking about growing the homestead. Growing the homestead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, you know, I think when you have a little homestead, there's always room for growth. Always. There's always room for growth. Always something to learn. Yeah, always something to learn. And um, so we thought we'd chat about that today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and as as we're like coming up with our little subtopics here, I'm thinking about when it was in our family's time, you know, our, our life that we decided that this is what we wanted to do. Because it wasn't, I don't, I never remembered like a decision to, right. let's be homesteaders. We never, we never thought of it like that. Yeah, no, it was never like a bookmark. No, but I do now more recently realize that there was a time where I went from working 40 hours a week and taking my babies to daycare and I paid a maid and uh, I had somebody come in and um, I took my laundry somewhere. You know? Right. So life, life looked very, very different than it does for me now. And, um, we made a decision that I would be home right? and I would stay home. Yeah. And, um, I, I do remember a turning point of let's try that, you know, and it was the next thing. Right. And so that's kind of the direction where we're going today. It was the next right thing. It was the next right thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, it, it has just morphed into the Mm -hmm. way we live now by continuously doing the next right thing. Yeah. And it was the same kind of thing for us. Like I used to work outside of the house Mm -hmm. and, um, it was before we moved to the property that we live at now. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, and so before we moved out here, I dabbled in gardening and Mm -hmm. we had had chickens for a really long time, but that was about the extent of it. But then when we moved to this property, it was like, yeah, now we can do the things. <laughs> now we can do the thing. And right. And so we made the decision that I was going to stay home. And, um, you know, for us, it was beneficial because, you know, we, I was, okay, yes, I was kind of losing my income, but mm-hmm. I was growing food for us. You were gaining so much. Yeah. I mean, and both of us, for us, when this happened, we were mamas with of littles. Yep. You know, we had babies at home. We wanted to spend as much time with them as possible. Uh-huh. Homeschooling. We, we became very home centric. Right. Yes. Right. Homeschooling. I, w- I was working from home. Yeah. But I was home. Yeah. And so um, at, at the same time, Eric became <laughs> home more. <laughs> uh-huh. So we he, he was working full time and um, also had his side gig going. Uh-huh. And he lost his full time. So, like, we lost two full-time incomes yeah, and he had to take his side thing full-time, but it, as he grew that, you know, there was a time period of, um, you know, growing <laughs> where we're like, we had to figure it out. We had to, you know, it wasn't just a, about income. It was about time also. So he had more time at home. I had more time at home. Our kids were so happy that we were always home <laughs> right. doing the home thing. Um, and so, yeah, we were already gardening when that happened. We already had some animals when that happened, but we never like seriously kept animals with a plan. Right. We were always kind of living in the moment of, yeah, let's get goats. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's, do, let's have a cow. Okay. What are you going to do with the cow? I don't know. It's going to live out there and, and, and eat browse <laughs> like right. a goat. <laughs> at, right. Like at some point it turned into like a focused purpose. Right. Like, right. This is what we're going to do, and this is why we're going to do it. Right. And so as part of that, and the way we changed our lifestyle, part of that was uh, we had a move. And with that move became the turning point. And Mm -hmm. I didn't know it then, but I can look back and, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I can see it now that that's when we really started to focus on, we had the garden, we had the chickens for eggs, but um, what's the next right thing? Right. So instead of the garden box, it right. became the big in-ground garden. Right. And yeah. I got excited when we moved. I got excited to see soil, you know, and, ooh, this is going to really grow. And um, we didn't have cows. Mm-hmm. We had goats, but we got rid of them when we moved because we didn't have perimeter fence. 
didn't have a place for it. Um, so we really went from playing around a little bit with a couple of homesteady type skills right. to a time of nothing when we moved. We like we didn't do any of it. Yeah. We didn't take chickens with us. We had no animals. We had no garden. We were starting from scratch. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But your move was kind of like that too, right? Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, uh, we brought a few chickens here with us, mm-hmm. um, but that was it. Mm-hmm. That was it. So um, I think the garden was kind of a good, like, natural place for us to start mm-hmm. um, because we had already done a couple of small gardens and had a little bit of success with that. Right, <laughs> Not right. much, right. but enough to perk our interest to go, oh, okay. We can do this. Yeah, we can do this. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, we, we grew a little bit of food, you know, at our last place. Mm-hmm. So maybe let's try to grow a little bit more food. Mm-hmm. And that was what kind of started like the whole growth of our homestead. Yeah. Yeah. Us too. Yeah. And so, all right. So you have like a four by eight garden and mm-hmm. it did well in the spring. Mm-hmm. The next natural thing might be to double that. Right. You know, for fall and winter, maybe do another four by eight garden. Or try, you know, I always tell people when they start to garden to just like pick one or two things, you know, a handful of things to try to grow. Just a couple of things that you can learn about and figure out, you know, what kind of feeding regimen they like and and learn the life cycle of the plant that way. Um, Maybe pick another couple of things. Yeah. Or if something didn't do well, try it again, but try a different variety. Right. You know? Yeah. Or, or, or try it in a different way. Um, I, I do like to tell people, add one or two things. Add one or two things. Um, if you can get, you know, one or two things that do really well, mm-hmm. you know, maybe grow a little bit more of those to see if you can mm-hmm. learn how to preserve that. Right. You know, that's a great way to start growing your homestead. Learn how to preserve what you're growing. Right. You know, maybe add an extra row of green beans. Mm-hmm. Learn how to put those up on your shelf. Mm. Or even freeze them if you're not into that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, green beans freeze very easily. Yeah. Um, Before we were really canning, the first thing I learned how to can was jam, and that was wild foraged blackberries. I think like Uh most Uh people (laughs) who are interested in the lifestyle. (laughs) Let's make jelly. And so, yeah, we made blackberry jam. Then we bought frozen berries from the store. Mm -hmm. And then, and that's all I canned for... Quite a while. Yeah. When um, I first started making jam, it was frozen blueberries mm-hmm. from the store. <laughs> right, right. I wasn't doing stock and green beans. I wasn't pressure canning anything. Um, and even the water bath, I, I oh, I, I think I did salsa, right? Yeah. Um, but other than that, I would freeze everything. We would blanch and freeze broccoli. We would blanch and freeze cauliflower um, until we got really good at those things and realized that the freezer is precious real estate. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so that's when it became time to advance my preservation skills right. and do the next right thing, which was canning. Yeah, time to learn a new skill. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's growth is growth is slow. Mm-hmm. Growth takes a lot of time. Any kind of lasting growth is for sure slow. Yeah, growth is slow and it does take time. Um, you know, and looking at our, our homestead now and thinking back on it, like we didn't get here fast. No, Rome wasn't built in a day. No, we did not get here fast. Um, the first year that we were out here, it was all about let's get our garden going. Mm -hmm. You know, let's focus this year on building a great garden. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much all we did that year. Mm -hmm. We didn't start immediately adding animals. Right. Let's just get the garden going first. Right. Um, and I say, like, do one thing and do it well. You know, <laughs> just do it well enough. To keep you going. Do it well enough to keep your interest in it mm-hmm. and to keep it going. Um, and to pro- that it provides something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you have the one thing going. What's the next right thing? Right. You know, can you say it's a garden? Did you just grow in the spring and the summer? Mm-hmm. You know, if you were just growing in the spring and the summer, maybe the next right thing is to grow in the fall and the winter. Right. I love that most about where we garden and I know. where we live. It's that we can grow <laughs> year round 
Um, now there's a place for taking, taking a season of rest. And, um, I do kind of envy those who have four seasons (laughs) for that reason. Like they have their winter off, but, um, I, I mean, I like that. Yeah. We have a big giant garden, but I can grow everything twice. Yeah. Right. And then I can also have my winter garden. Yeah. So our off time is kind of like now. Right. It is. That's like June, exa- July. That's exactly what I was just thinking. Like our season of rest is totally July and August, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. the only thing I'm going to go out and do in the garden is pick peppers. Mm-hmm. I picked some zipper peas, but I was in and out of the garden today in like 20 minutes. Yeah. Now the weeds have taken over. That's a whole different story, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not out there trying to stay on top of everything. Cause I don't have that much going on this time of year. N- nobody does, but we're gearing up for the next season. And so, yeah, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said try to grow another season. Yeah. Try to grow another season. Um, you know, and so you just have to kind of look at your your homestead and your family as a whole and to just kind of decide, okay, what are we going to do next? Mm-hmm. You know, is it chickens? Maybe you already have chickens. Maybe you already have chickens. Are you utilizing those chickens to the fullest? Mm-hmm. I think it's really cool when you have something that's working really well on your homestead and you can take an element of that and turn it into something else. Like permaculture's rule of... Um, is it the rule? I can't remember what they call it, but it's like everything has more than one purpose. Everything has more than one purpose, you know, like, okay, you have chickens for eggs. Mm-hmm. Well, chickens for eggs comes with a whole lot of chicken manure. <laughs> it's a big byproduct there. You know, that's a resource that you can be mm-hmm. using in your garden that you're already doing well. Right. But you know what? That garden could be better if you would take that chicken manure and turn it into compost. Right. You know, so... That's how a homestead grows, I feel like, Mm -hmm. by kind of utilizing what you already have going and turning it into something, something more. You're growing your skills. Yeah. 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 And honing, (laughs) right? Honing the skills. Um, Yeah. It's maybe, maybe one thing when we were talking about this topic was like, okay, so I thought back to when we first had chickens and we had a couple of chickens and we got a couple of eggs a day. right? Right. Um, maybe you need more chickens, right? Right. Maybe, maybe you want to never buy eggs from the store and you want to have a great abundance in the summer, even, and you know that you're going to have less in the winter. Yeah. Well, let's learn how to preserve those eggs. Yeah. Right. We, we have a whole episode on preserving eggs. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. We do. We've, we've both done videos on our YouTubes about liming eggs. We freeze eggs. Um, Yeah. We, we can link that egg episode if you want, but, um, that's, that's the next thing, right? Yeah. Is I don't want to buy any eggs. I haven't bought eggs in a couple of years now. Right. Where before we had chickens, we had eggs, but we still had, like, we would run out. The holidays always got me. Um, same thing like with our butter, butter and eggs, <laughs> cream, butter and eggs. Yeah. Like those rich things that we want to use in baking at the holidays, I would have to go and buy. Um, or this is going to sound really crappy of me, <laughs> like really not, uh, not uh, what's the, what's the opposite of generous stingy. <laughs> it's going to sound really stingy that, and it's not just a stinginess. It's also keeping others thoughts in mind. Like some people are weirded out by what we do. Yeah. Like they don't want my butter. They no. don't want it. Some people are like, yeah, bring me the butter. That's a, they, it's a treasured gift. Right. Some right? people are like, you eat chicken on the bone. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I really do. <laughs> I chew it off the bone. <laughs> and then I make bone broth. Right, 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 right. We make gravy to put on more more meat. <laughs> yeah. So um, some people are weirded out by it. And I, I have had to keep that in mind in the past. Like not so much anymore as far as family goes. Like they all know what we do. And most of them are thankful and grateful for any any products off of our farm that we offer. But there are times where I'm like, I know this person doesn't appreciate this. I really don't want to give it up. Right. Like right. that sounds stingy. I know it sounds really bad, but... Um, I, I, I'm trying to not be that way, but I like to give food gifts as at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Like that's a big deal. That's a thing that I can do. It's a thing I've put time into something that's heartfelt to me. And, um, 
at Christmas time, I've been like, mm, so I'll give away the butter and then I have to buy butter. Oh, right. It's like, tough. It is. But I haven't bought butter and I haven't bought eggs in a couple of years now. So nice. that is nice. Like that's that was the next step in learning when I have more cream, like learning the cycle of the cow's lactation to know that like, oh, she's going to give me a lot more cream towards the end before I dry her off to freshen again. And I need to utilize that. Like I need right. to preserve it and save it and and figure out how to keep it, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that I don't have to buy butter during that dry time. Yeah. So... Yeah, and you didn't get there overnight. Mm-mm. Like it took a long time to get to that point. Mm-hmm. You know, growth is yeah. slow. Well, and there's some repetition that happens, yeah. right? Like repetition is good, and that's how we we teach our kids, mm-hmm. right? You, you keep doing it until you can do it well, right? And and that's kind of how it happened, like with the cow or the chickens, like sticking through those seasons and knowing mm-hmm. when they're going to start laying less eggs, mm-hmm. right? Oh, I need to have a buildup before then. Yeah. And I really feel like it's focusing on one thing at a time, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it would be insane to add like a bunch of new stuff all at once. Oh my gosh. You would make yourself crazy. Yeah, it would, but that would be insane. Yeah. So my rule of thumb is always one new thing a year. Mm-hmm. You know, what's one new thing that we can do this year, something that we haven't learned, something that we haven't grown, Mm -hmm. an animal that we haven't raised, Mm -hmm. you know, what's one new thing that -hmm. you can do on your homestead to grow it? Right. To try. And it, and it doesn't have to be major. It can be something small. And there's things that you try. We've talked about this even recently. Like, what have you tried that you won't do again (laughs) or or didn't go well? (laughs) You know, you can try again. Or we've talked about like setting things down for a season or for a time. Yeah. Or just that, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do that well. I'm happy to support someone else in my community who can do it. And I'm going to put my energy towards doing this other thing really well. Yes. Right? Yep. There are seasons for a reason. Yeah. There's some wisdom in that. Yeah. Thank goodness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the garden expansion, the adding new plants, the learning about soil, maybe growing soil. Maybe that's the next thing. Right. Like, okay, so you've got a garden. Go- yes. Learn to make compost. Mm-hmm. Um, and on the whole building soil note, mm-hmm. you know, learn to rotate your animals. Right. You know, if you have animals that are grazing right. and you want better pasture, mm-hmm. Maybe try to rotate those animals around. Right. Um, You know, a good temporary way to do that is buy a couple strands of the portable electric fence Mm -hmm. um, and start moving those animals around. That'll start, it'll start growing your pasture. Right. And again, that's a, it's a more than one purpose thing, like the animals providing the meat or the milk or whatever, Mm -hmm. but they're also bettering your land. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I yeah. love that. <laughs> I know. It's such a good like completion of the circle. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, bringing new animals onto the farm. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about what you need to do first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so infra- infrastructure, infrastructure, right? Infrastructure yeah. is so important. It Get is. it right from the beginning. Do the better thing. Spend the extra money. Don't try to cheap out and skimp and cut corners on that because you will forever be sorry. Especially on fencing. Fencing, yes. Especially on fencing. Especially on fencing. Fencing Mm -hmm. can be a tricky thing. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and that's something permanent that you're putting in place. So you can Mm -hmm. do the next right thing for your family and get that cow or, you know, get the little flock of sheep or whatever it is. Right. Have you, have you put up a head fence before? Have you had to redo your, your own fence? Yeah, we've had to redo several pig pens. Mm. Um, several They're rough. Pigs are rough. Pig yeah. pens. I mean, the pig pen that we have right now, um, I mean, the fence is, is up. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I actually have my sheep in there right now. But um, it could probably be redone. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just rough on the fences. So they are. we find ourselves constantly having to do fencing um, we're always making repairs to fence. Always even, making even fence like repairs. The best of our fences need repairs sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they so, push on them. They um, tr- limbs fall on them. You know, the stuff happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So water, mm-hmm. water is a really super important infrastructure thing for around a homestead because mm-hmm. hauling water is ridiculous. <laughs> 
It takes so much time and it takes so much energy. Right. So one thing that I heard early on when you're setting up a homestead is try to keep in mind when you're setting things up, how can I do this in less steps? Right. You know, how, how can I set this up where I'm walking less? Mm-hmm. And, you know, try to set things up so they make sense. And that'll make that growth easier. I think Joel Salatin talks about that a lot. I think that's maybe possibly where I, where I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it really and he makes also sense. Says, and when you do take, take the steps, never go empty handed. <laughs> Right. You're always taking something with you. Which is why overalls are important. Yes. <laughs> yes. Buy the overalls. Buy the overalls. <laughs> and get the good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Have pockets. Yes. Um, um, yeah. I, I, I do agree. You have to have water everywhere. Um, the way we're set up right now. So we have our house is in the middle of our property. Right. And then our fields rotate around the house. Yeah. So every field has a gate to the next field. Right. Um, and that's just the way it works. For some of them were there when we got there, then yeah. that worked great. Some of them we had to add in um, to make a, make it work for us uh-huh. and what we want to do. The only, only part I have a hard time with is across the driveway. I have two gates that face each other, but if yeah. I have to move animals by myself and move, opening both of those gates, mm-hmm. some of those cows are like, yippee, right? <laughs> freedom, <laughs> because they're spoiled too. They're, I, I let them out a couple at a time to the yard to eat the yard grass. And right. So like they know when they get out, right. like, oh, yard grass. Um, so if I have some help, it's, it's a lot easier. But um, for the most part, the fencing situation works really well. The water situation, we have water run to every field yeah. also. So most of those were there again. Um, we did have to add in a couple of water lines. Um, I don't remember exactly which ones, I'm, but I remember renting a trencher to do it and mm-hmm. it was well worth the cost of half a day rental. Yeah. Um, we're getting ready to do that again, actually, because we've, we've made plans to grow our homestead and add, yeah. add a new element. So. Yeah. We want to get a trencher again and add some new water out front. Mm-hmm. Um, because I mean, I have a hose all the way down there, but it right. takes forever to fill up a cow trough right. with a water hose. Mm-hmm. You know, if we just ran the water line down there, we could right. set it up on the automatic waterer. Right. And um, hoses don't last. Hoses don't last and they have to stretch out all the way across the yard and then yeah. the Get boys get run over. They the run them over with the lawnmower. Right, right. And <laughs> it, it's like um, it's like doing the cheaper fence the first time. Like yeah. when you do the cheap fence the first time, you know you're going to have to replace it. Water hoses, you know you're going to have to replace. Like right. just run the lines. Run the lines. Yeah, if it's something you want to do, a hose will get you by. But yeah, you know it's not going to last. Yeah. So, um, yeah, all of all of our fields have water on them. So that's that's nice. Um, and all of our fields also have some type of feeder that I can throw minerals in. They're not proper mineral feeders. I still need to do that. I know (laughs) we really have to get on that, but I know, um, yeah, they all have some kind of container that I can throw minerals in when they're on that field. Yeah. And that, that works for us. Yeah. So I guess the, the point here is, you know, is set up the good infrastructure. So the growth is easier. Think ahead. Think ahead, yeah. Mm -hmm. Set up the infrastructure the right way, and if stuff is set up the right way, it's easy to grow, Mm -hmm. you know? Right. I mean, there's always going to be times where you're like, oh, I need to change this. We'll change it. That's fine. A a, a little change is easy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, getting getting the big stuff done first is definitely going to help you out. For sure. Um, Cages, if you are, or cages and coops, like, I'm thinking like rabbits. Right. Um, yeah, proper proper, quail. proper pens for everybody. Mm-hmm. We're struggling that right now with, <laughs> with that right now with our sheep. Are you? Which is why my sheep are in my pig pen right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have any pigs in there with them, but um, the, for a while the sheep were fine on the electric fence, mm-hmm. and then they figured that out, and that didn't matter. And then they were fine with five-strand barbed wire, mm-hmm. and then they figured that out. <laughs> and so now basically my sheep are like full-on free-ranging sheep. They are like all over creation. Mm. Um, and so we are about to put up some more permanent fencing mm-hmm. specifically for the sheep. Oh, good. Because they're starting to act like goats. Oh, I know. We can't have that. No. (laughs) No. So. Sorry to all the goat lovers out there. (laughs) No offense meant. (laughs) No. None at all. 
I'm just not goat people. Yeah, I'm not goat people either. <laughs> I, it, and people come over all the time. You probably get this too. You should get some goats. I know. No. No. I've done that more than once. <laughs> I should not get goats. That is not going to be part of the growth of my homestead. Mm-hmm. When we talked about goats with our friend Emily uh-huh. at Bridge Acres Farms, you guys can go back and listen to that. Like she, that was she, good. It was good. She pounds that. Like infrastructure fencing is the most important thing. Yes, about getting goats. So yes, I am always amazed. At, I I pass this one homestead. It's like right off of a major road. Mm-hmm. Um, on the way to Fleming Island, and it is right up. Their goat pasture is right up on the major road, and mm-hmm. it, I'm just always amazed. I'm like, those people are brave for having them goats <laughs> right up here by this road. But if you look at their fencing, mm-hmm. it is solid. Right, it's they quality have, fence. They have a solid permanent fence, and they have two hot wires on it. And they've had those goats there for as long as I can remember. I As long as I can You know remember. where I'm talking about. I know about. what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I pass, I'm like, wow. Yeah. I don't think they've ever had any trouble. I've never seen a goat out there. I, yeah, I know those people. I, they they have had goats there for a very long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, That's cool. cool. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I can't say it enough. Like, growth is slow. Growth mm-hmm. takes time. Mm-hmm. And only do just a, a little at a time. Pick what, up, pick up one extra thing. Yep. What's, do do one extra thing. What's the next right thing? Right. And it's going to be different for every homestead, you know, depending upon what your family eats. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to um, drop a bomb on you here. Okay. <laughs> because I say it like that because it's unexpected. What is the thing that you added this year, or you're looking to add this year to your homestead? The thing that we added this year. Mm-hmm. What have we added this year? Or looking to add? A dairy cow. A dairy cow, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Adding dairy animals, I think, is a big jump yeah. in, in Homestead. Keeping keeping dairy, it's huge. Yeah. Um, it's, it is such a huge commitment. And it's something that, um, I mean, you're still, you have to work on some infrastructure for that, but yes. I mean, you have enough to keep the cow Yes, and you can keep her well and healthy, but, um, yeah, but like we still need to build our milking, stanchion. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that she's probably like only three months pregnant right now. Mm-hmm. If she was bred when I think she was bred. So, I'm sure she was. Yeah. She's been pretty chill since then. Mm-hmm. So, um, pretty sure she's bred and, um, but yeah, that's like our next big thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Last year it was compost. Mm -hmm. We got serious about making lots of compost. That's my thing right now. Yeah. Is working through compost. Is working on compost. I added rabbits recently for the purpose of compost. Yep. I also got for my birthday a walk behind push mower. Ooh. (laughs) And it's like, it's brand new, but it's like old school. Like it doesn't self propel. (laughs) <laughs> they don't make those. Maybe the, some of the electric ones are. I have a self-propelling gas you, mower really? with a bag on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The bag is what I wanted. The size was what I wanted um, to, you know, get between my walkways. Yeah. And all that. That was a game changer for compost making for me, mm-hmm. you know, because you can take that whole bag and just dump it right into your bin. I'm super excited about it. I need so to get cool. a thermometer, but um, I, I have mowed just for the purpose of getting around the garden. I haven't mowed for the purpose of compost yet but it's it's coming here in the next couple of weeks and um i'm i'm super excited to really try to hone that um Mm -hmm. between the rabbits and the chicken manure and the grass to make compost with um and then what was the other thing i wanted oh i I really want to work on worm worms worm bins worm castings worm composting Mm -hmm. vermicomposting whatever Mm -hmm. i really want to learn that um it just seems foreign to me but and then we're also, we have a little bit of a business venture that we're considering to do <laughs> it's like, because we, why not? Because why not? It's the next, right. it's the next right thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, it'll be, I mean, it'll be part of the homestead and, um, it'll be a good, it, it involves growing food. Can't go wrong with that. Right. Um, I don't see where anything will be wasted or will be too terribly difficult to handle. So I think it'll be good. I, yeah. I don't want to spill the beans on what it is yet, right. but, um, I'm excited about it. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. 
That's good. Maybe generating some income from your homestead is your next right thing. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if you have those extra eggs, you can start selling Mm -hmm. them. We're working on getting in a guest um, to do a podcast on creating income on your yeah. homestead. I think that'll be a really fantastic topic because that's, I think so too. That's something that um, you know this life doesn't have to be expensive, and and largely it's not. But there are parts of it that were more expensive than expected, yeah. like butchering animals, right? Yeah. Like fencing, fencing. <laughs> Good right. night. Fencing is expensive. Now it really is. <laughs> I mean, it really is. But I mean, it's everything has gone up. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe how can you create a little pocket change mm-hmm. from your homestead yeah. and help it pay, maybe not pay for itself, but help it pay towards itself. Right. You yeah. know, I mean, maybe selling those eggs will pay for the chicken feed. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. I think that's about all I've got right now. Yeah, that's all I've got. Okay. Yep. Growth is slow. Just figure out what the next right thing is. Right. That's and what I was going to say. Yep. And yep. do it. Take action. One new thing a year. Yep. All right, guys. Well, let us know over on Instagram. If you would, you can send us a message. Let us know what's the next right thing that you're doing to grow your homestead. Yeah. We yeah. would love to hear from y'all. Yep. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.